Yeah, do you uh, do you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Or, yeah, good. Any um, any question before I any question before I begin? No, doctor. Okay, so um, to uh, to uh, specify uh, that our next um, class, of course, it's first day. Um, I will send you the questions um, nine thirty. Nine thirty. Um, do you have any other classes on 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 Thursday? Yes, we have. Yes. Oh, what time? Before or after me? Before. I Before. Think. And do you have an exam at that time? No. Oh, good. Okay, so yeah, nine thirty. Then your your lecture will be will be finished. So I will send you the questions at nine thirty. And do you have an exam after me? Or do you have any class after after me? For me, no. Or do you have do you have classes after my class? For me, no. But some, yeah, maybe yes. Some people have. Yeah, doctor, and I think uh, they have exam syntax exam. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I'm starting nine thirty in my exam. Nine thirty, my exam, and I think it should finish. It should finish um, um, at eleven o'clock, because your class should uh, should should. I think your class should uh, next class should begin at eleven twenty. Correct. Yeah, I let me check. Let me check. Because the class after me, yeah, 11.20. So you have, you can have time in my exam, 9.30 till 11, till 11 o'clock, um, one hour and a half. Or you can take uh, another 10 minutes, so uh, you can leave uh, my exam 10 minutes before the, your next class. Okay, it's fine. You are, you're not going to be late in anything. So, yeah, any, um, any questions? So be careful. That's what's going to happen. Uh, your exam, I will send you your exam at 9.30. 9.30, I will send you the exam on Thursday, okay? And uh, it should be finished, really, you can finish in one hour, 20 minutes. You should finish in one hour, 20 minutes, maximum one hour, uh, 30 minutes. You should be finished and send me back, as usual, as an email, to my email. Don't ask me. Where am I going to send it? Send it via email. No turn it in. Okay? No WhatsApp or anything. Just send it by email. Okay. So Any? Yeah? From 9.30 till 11 o'clock, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Doctor? Yeah? Can you examine us in the evening? It's better. No, 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 we are not allowed. The university regulation says no, no evening. But we have exams in the evening. No, because you say we want it in the evening and then you go and complain. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, yeah. I know, I'm not talking about you, Saeed Abdul Aziz. I'm not talking about you personally. But you say we want this. And then you go and complain. That's what I was told. That's what I was told. So please um, forgive me for this, but but no evening classes. No evening classes, no evening exams. 
Okay, doctor. You see, now I have people say, we know, we don't want it in the evening, you see? <laughs> and that is, already you have people saying no. Anyway, no problem, no problem, Abdelaziz. It's going to be easy. Nine, nine thirty is a nine. It's a, it's a good time. You know, it's really lovely time. What's wrong with the at this time? It's nice. You get up, wash your face, and get ready. And uh, you know, I think it should be okay and should be relaxed. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Uh, if you um, uh, then uh, let's go back to. If you have no more questions, uh, let me show you, or let's start um, the, um, the 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 lecture today, which is, as you can see, the American Indian stories, or the uh, really about Native American literature. Native people actually wrote uh, uh, a lot of literature, but you know, in a funny way, you know, remember, really, it's it's to do with this marginalization situation that people always you know are are put in on the margin and they are neglected and they are not taken really care of and so on so that's why you know they were neglected uh, by scholars and by universities and by so many really institutions because they were all dominated by whites which is really sad and this is miserable again we know we know really we know that this is the problem with with societies and how the question of racism you know it's really funny but it is there yeah i mean it's really there people always uh, you know talk about it and complain about it so um yeah so american uh, native american literature to some extent uh, is really interesting and really, um, really nice. Uh, unlike what, what the Africans were writing about. Really the problem, what is the problem for natives? Of course, we know the main problem is, of course, they were killed and they were massively killed, massively exterminated. That's the main issue, which is the heavy unbelievable you know big question which is life you know it's really life for god's sake it's it's a matter of life and death and really that's the idea that all of their writings africans or 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 um, or um, really um, hispanic or mexican or let's say uh, you know, I'm saying here, you know, these are all Aboriginal or Native people or, you know, Indigenous people, um, whether uh, originally Africans or slaves or Natives, it's the same problem. It's this problem of uh, horrible treatment and marginalization and killing by the white man. Full stop. That's their problem. And really, that's the issue they were writing about all the time. That's the main issue. And it's a heavy, really heavy, absolutely heavy, good, honorable issue, which is, it's a matter of your, and your own, you know, concerns your own life, your own life uh, here on this earth. And really, this is uh, the, the problem everywhere you find in all these, uh, you know, writings by American, Native Americans or Red Indians, or original people, and other um, other you know non-whites. Let's say non-whites, because I think this problem will live forever. Really, it's 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 terrible. But this is this is a fact of life. You know, uh, American society is built on this, really, which is which is really a horrible thing. Really, it's a bad, absolutely bad, uh, you know, uh, constitution where everything is really constitutionalized uh, to being superior and inferior and, you know, powerful and weak. And yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know, I said that to you many times. I mean, President Trump said that a lot of times, you know, Trump, you know, just recently, you know, 
few months ago he was talking exactly what I'm saying, you know, this ugly uh, attitude towards blacks or towards, you know, non-whites. Exactly. I mean, this is racism, absolute racism. So really the, the things we have here in this collection of short stories, they, they talk about the experience of these you know, this writer really giving us a lovely example, a lovely example of the ways in which these natives really lived and the kind of life and the easy, the romanticism, the lovely atmosphere, the naturalism, the absolute simplicity and, and primitiveness even. You know, the, the really not just primitiveness, I don't mean it here in the negative sense, primitiveness to mean really spontaneity and love and absolute, um, you know, plain and simple and relaxed life, which is their life to live the way they were living in, in, in nature and living in a peaceful way. Uh, no, no problems at all till the man, till the white man came and started really to exterminate and this is the verb, really, exterminate, really. It's absolute extermination. Absolute extermination. And that's what they did. You know, it's really, I don't feel comfortable talking about this, but it's really, it's really annoying how you can feel that a, a nation, a nation built on other, on other nations' bodies or or, or as, as we say, on other people's skulls. How can you build a nation on other nations' skulls? Yeah, as we say, How can you build a nation on that? I really don't know. I mean, that's why really many, many, many American writers, and I think I said that to you and to people who I taught before in survey one, the sense of guilt and the sense of guilt and the sense of, you know, feeling about the question of death and the question of punishment and the question of sin. And this is how sin sinful, you know, these white people feel, even when they were children, they feel sinful because they were, they were born, their parents and parents and parents and fathers and grandfathers. They sinned against the natives, they sinned against the, the slaves, and so on. And these children really, really, in a way, in a way, they feel to some extent they are, if you like, uh, you know, the offsprings or the children of children of sinful, sinful generation. Oh my God, what's this doctor? Yeah. I think this is a tough thing to say, but yeah, I think that's true. Really, I do, I do. So here, uh, Gertrude, even look at her, he, she called herself Gertrude. Why should she call herself Gertrude? Her name is not Gertrude. Her name is Kalasa, Yani Shu. Why? Why should we call her Gertrude, Bonnie, why? Because nobody would accept to publish for her with her real name. It's a shame. It's a shame. When people are, are respected for the colors of their eyes or the colors of their skin, it's, it's terrible. It's wicked. Yeah. So here, this uh, woman, lovely woman, Zitkala Sa. Really, she wrote to us a lovely collection of short stories. And here they are, as you can see, I have copied this from the net. And it's a free, free um, uh, site when you can find all this. I copied only this section or selection from, from those. As you can see, there is a little um, biographical information here about, about uh, her. Notice, um, notice the little, little tiny, little tiny, uh, really, um, well, tiny introduction, really. Um, as you can see here, 
Um, there's a little, um, um, I think it's, it's interesting to read that, but yeah, you can see how much she was, uh, if you like, uh, uh, moved and how the way she was brought up and educated and so on. And the stories here, really, really she's telling us, they are really full of, maybe full of autobiographical information. To some extent, you can say, well, this is, she's writing here about all, maybe all what, uh, what uh, natives felt. Well, you know, at some point, at some point, you know, she's reflecting, uh, you know, upon those uh, really um, things um, about, um, you know, her society in general. So, yeah, the stories, as you can see, they are really tiny and small. You can see here the collections. You know, I, um, I, I think I, I want you to read all of them because really they are nice, they are short and nice, and they are full of, as I said, social questions, political questions, racial issues, social issues, to do with the, uh, you know, society, and again, the, the heavy question of really life and death, really, this is the main, the main issue in all of these stories. I mean, uh, you know, if I, if I begin, uh, looking at uh, one of these stories here and there you can see that uh, i think uh, you can see it here clearly let me let me start uh, with the first one called my mother now let me uh, again before i finish or before even <laughs> before i begin even um the, you know i have uh, other recordings on moodle please check uh, those as well because uh, I have uh, said uh, some stuff could be different from what I'm saying today, I don't know, but I have other recordings, so you have to check those recordings as well. Okay, and they are, uh, as usual, uh, on Moodle. Now, the first story, my mother. Anybody read anything of this? Yeah? Anybody read anything? Doctor, don't embarrass us. We don't have time. Yeah. No, I Sorry? I didn't. Talking about myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Reda, thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I understand. I know uh, you are um, really overwhelmed with work and uh, was study, but you know, this is life. Um, and I think, yeah, I will try to be brief here in this, uh, in this uh, lecture today. As you can see, I'm saying here, the first story, as I said, the narrator here is, is a first person narrator. As you can see, impressions of an Indian childhood. You know, here the narrator is always here, like a child, and she is narrating to us, and she here, the narrator is a she, is a girl, is a young girl. As I said, there is a lot, really a lot of similarities between the narrator and the author herself, you know, Bonin or uh, Zitkalasa herself. A wigwam of weather-strained canvas stood at the base of some irregularly, irregularly ascending hills. A footpath would uh, wound its way gently down the sloping land till it, till it reached the road river. Sorry, the broad river bottom. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I can't see because, yeah, because I'm too, a bit too far from the screen. Yeah, let me see. <clears throat> yeah, notice uh, the starting here, as, as I told you, there's also, I think I want to... Um, uh, highlight this for you, which is, um, please, I wanted to pay attention about the romantic elements of these stories. The romantic elements of these stories. We have so many examples of romanticism. Yes, they are heavy, uh, loaded with the political, social, racial issues, heavily loaded with 
serious um, political, social, racial, etc. issues, but yet they are also very romantic in texture and in tone, and if you like, uh, you know, this the way the tuning of it is really very uh, romantic and sometimes very musical and very emotional. And to some extent, some people may call this maybe melodramatic. Yeah, so you can see here the emphasis on the beauty of nature, where they live here, this uh, the place where this family here live. Creeping through the long swamp grasses that bent over it on either side, it came out on the edge of the Missouri. Of course, the area, you know, the Missouri area in the state of Missouri. Uh, so, as you can see here, it's putting, you know, the introduction here, the, the if you like, the first, the first, uh, uh, as I said, the locale, the place where they are here, morning, soon, sorry, here, morning, noon, and evening. My mother came to draw water from the muddy stream of our household use. Yeah, look at this romanticism here, you know, the mother going to the spring and bringing water. In those days, in the old days, you know, there was no tap water. There are no tap, no tap water in houses. You have, people have to go, and I think here in this country, maybe in, in many other countries, in many, many, many countries, even in Syria, we had so many areas we had no tap water. People go to the to the river or to springs to to bring fresh water for drinking. And here, this is the same. She said, "My mother used to go there all the time to go to bring water from the again notice from the muddy stream. Look at this muddy muddy stream. <laughs> well, it doesn't mean dirty. Really, it doesn't mean dirty. It means." You know, the water is a spring water, uh, is a spring which is uh, really coming out of the ground, of course, of the earth, but very fresh and very lovely. Always when my mother started to for the river, I stopped my play to run along with her. She was only a medium height. Often she was sad and silent, at which times her, her full arched lips were compressed into hard and bitter lines and shadows fell under her black eyes. Then I clung to her hand and begged to know what made the tears fall. Look at this. You know, immediately now we see the impression that this mother is always frowning and is always sad and is always crying. And here the daughter is wondering why my mother is always feeling sad and miserable. Okay? And that's what she said, you know, here the, about her, her lips were compressed, you know, meaning always feeling bitter, feeling ang angry. Hush, my little daughter, must never talk about my tears. And smiling through them, she patted my head and said, now let me see how fast you can run today. Whereupon I, throw, I tore away at my highest possible speed with my long black hair blowing in the breeze. Yeah, as I said, look at the romanticism here, the lovely, absolute romantic, even angelic, even idyllic, even paradisal, really. It's like, you know, as we know, this uh, shepherd kind of atmosphere. You see, this is what I mean about the romanticism. This is what I meant by the romanticism. Really, you find a lot of that in the stories in these stories. I was a wild little girl of seven. So here the narrator telling us, and she's a seven-year-old girl, loose clad, loosely clad in a slip of brown buckskin. Oh my God, this is lovely. Look at, at her dress, she said. It's a buckskin. It's like, you know, the, the buck, it's like these gazelles, you know, they are called buck. And, um, you know, like uh, here even the word Starbucks, you know, Starbucks, you know, the word buck is, is to do with this animal like, like a gazelle or like, a, you know, a, a halfway between 
between, um, well, something similar to, to gazelle or something like that. Um, so her dress, she said, clad, I mean, dressed, dressed uh, loosely in a, in a really very comfortable way with a, with a buckskin, brown buckskin. And light-footed with a pair of soft moccasins on my feet. It was as free as the wind that blew my hair. And no less spirited than a bounding deer. You see, so she's comparing herself how, you know, absolutely lovely and relaxed and romantic and beautiful. Um, she's comparing herself, her free, her freedom to a, the free deer. As I said, the free gazelle. They were, sorry. These were my mother's pride. Yeah. Who? Oh, these means my life, my hair, the way I am, the way I, I grew up, the way my mother looks at me. She feels so proud of me. She said, her pride is this in me, my wild freedom and overflowing spirits. Now, she says this, you know, this is the pride of my mother. How happy she feels for me because I'm totally free. She taught me no fear save that of intruding myself upon others. Yeah, this is the first lesson that she was told. She said, fear nobody, fear nothing. The only thing you should fear is do not intrude on people's privacies. Do not intrude. And I think that's, that's a very good thing. Yeah, people are nosy. Don't put your nose where you, you, know, you should not. Yeah, don't be nosy. And we say this to people. Yeah, nosiness is wicked. So really, uh, you can see, as I say to you, um, you know, the idea about romanticism. Having gone many paces ahead, I stopped panting for breath and laughing with glee at my, as my mother watched my every movement. I was not wholly conscious of myself, but was more keenly alive to the fire within. You see, so she's full of life, you know, the fire within, meaning how lively I was. I was, it was as if I were the activity and my hands and feet were only experiments for my spirit to work upon. Look at this lovely language, really amazing, amazing thing. She said, she said, she's saying that my, my, my inside is full of fire and my hands and my feet are only ways to show how this fire really works. You know, she means fire, means alive, absolutely alive. And yeah, I mean, that's true. Kids are like that. Children are like that. And you can, you can have this fire inside you till you are maybe 40. But after 40, this fire will go down a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Returning from the river, I tucked beside my mother with my hand upon the bucket, I believe I was carrying. One time on such a return, I remember a bit of conversation we had. My grown-up cousin, uh, Warka Ziwin, <laughs> this is like really lovely here, sunflower, Warka, yeah. Raida? Yes, doctor. Do you know anybody called Warqa? A woman's name? Warqa. Warqa. No, it's not familiar. Really? No, no, Romani Warqa? Maybe, maybe there is a such name. Yeah. We have a lot of Syrian, Syrian Warqa, and in Saudi they, they call their girls as Warqa. Warqa? Yeah. Huh? It's a lovely yeah. name. Yeah, it's a lovely name. So notice here, she this name, is this uh, name as an Arab name? Uh, the Red Indians are originally Arabs, maybe? 
What? What's this? Warka? Warka Zewin? You know, we have, do you know the, do you know the word Zwan? Zwan, do you know, do you know the word Zwan in Arabic? Are you asking me, doctor? Yeah. No, no, I don't. I'm asking everybody, but since you are the only alive one, maybe. It's you, that you are the only alive one, maybe in class. I don't know. Sorry, sorry, other uh, people. I don't mean to be mean against you, but um, yeah. What's the word Z1? Do you know the word Z1 in Arabic? No. No. Really? Anybody from the village here? Any, any villagers? I have 28 people here. No, nobody from the village? Are you all from Paris? Hello? Boys, where are you? Yes, doctor. Are you from a village? Do you have... <laughs> I want to ask you something, really. Um, do you have... Uh, do you grow, I see some areas in this country, they grow wheat. You know wheat? al -qamah. Yes. Yeah, when you grow wheat, there is, um, you know, some stalks which grow, you know, in between or among the wheat stalks. And the seed, uh, um, the seeds, you know, for 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 uh, those, you know, or the grains, the grains really, uh, they are uh, small and black, and they are not edible. We can't eat them. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you don't because uh, you are you don't uh, see it. Maybe people who live in the village and they who work in the field, they should know this. And really, it's an it's an Arabic name. It's an it's an Arabic thing. We say zwan, a ziwan, who which is really it's like this plant, which is which is not really. It's like it's not barley or it's not really. Um, you know, um, uh, any other sort of, um, uh, you know, um, kind of wheat, really. It's not wheat, but it's, si it's something which is not, uh, not edible by humans. We give it to chicken and to animals to eat. And sometimes when you, when you um, try to clean, to purify the, the wheat, the grain from that, you know, it's very clear. You can spot it because it's dark. It's black. The color is black. And it's called Zwan. And this is Zwan, or we call it even, even we have a saying in Arabic, in Syria. We have a saying, I don't know, Ghaida, can you help me? Yeah. What, what you we mean? have a saying in Syria. Listen to this. Okay. Um, we say Zwan al Balad, Ziwan, Zwan al Balad, Walla Hanta Jalab. What are you talking about, doctor? What's this? You understand? No, really. <laughs> We have this. We have this saying in Syria: "Zwan al Balad wa la hanta jalab." Zwan al Balad wa la hanta jalab means eat and take and trust your own people, your own production, your own your own uh, people, rather than others from outside. Like. Like what we say, if you, for example, let's say, for example, 
somebody we say this to people to young men who marry who marry foreign ladies or or strange or distant let's say distant distant um, people from distant places we say no no you should marry from your own area you should marry from your own village from your own area it's better because you know them we have uh, we have the opposite um, phrase we say um, which is the opposite you need like to marry someone who's a far away is not not from your relative so yeah i didn't mean hey hey i didn't mean relative no no not relative in blood i don't mean relative i mean your own people your own kind your own villagers yeah doctor yeah yeah, yeah. it's not to do with blood we say this hanta zwan al balad wala hanta jalab yani law mishtari hanta fakhma fakhira min ghair balad wa anta andak tintuj hanta bas sayyi'a shwiya al mathal yuqal inu hay al hanta tab'a baladak hiya afdal min al hanta la tishtariha min dubai wa la tishtariha min london you understand? Yes, yes. And that's why you say, if you marry Bint Dira, أحسن ما تروح إلى يعني دبي ولا تروح إلى بيروت وتجيب واحدة مغربية ولا لبنانية ولا سورية. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, <laughs> This is the idea. Uh, and really this is Z1 here I'm, I'm talking about the word Z1 really it's a it's an interesting word here <laughs> the name is really amazing I don't know is this related to Arabic I don't know but it's really lovely and funny and sorry I wasted time talking about this but it's a lovely really associ association here to see what Z1 what's this yeah and she here is talking about, you know, how this um, this young mother, uh, sorry, this uh, her cousin, uh, talking about, you know, about, uh, you know, the, the the way they were talking here. Notice, who was then seventeen, always went to the river alone for water for her mother. Their wigwam was not far from ours. And I saw her daily going to and, fr and from the river. I admired my cousin greatly. So I said, Mother, when I am told as my cousin Warqaziwin, you shall not have to come to for water. I will do it for you. With a strange tremor in the voice, in her voice, which I could not understand, she answered, if the pale face does not take away for, from us the river we drink, I mean, look at this sentence. And she says, the pale face. And I think this is a buzzword I want you to remember all the time. Because here they never say the word white, because to them, they are not white, they are ugly. And that's why they call them pale face. You know, the way, the way they describe them as ugly, ugly white man. Notice, to take away from us the river? How? Because yes, that's the idea. They were, it means the way they treated them, they kicked them away from their places, as if to say they took away from them, yeah, they took away from them their land, their homes, and their river. Mother, who is this bad pale face? I asked. Ah. You see, so this is the question. Who is this pale face? My little daughter, he is a sham, a sickly sham. Wow. Yeah. Sham? You know what sham is? 
Yeah, really. <laughs> Again, is the sham we say here a sham? Shamana is shamana. It has the same meaning in English. Really, sham. Do you know the meaning? Sham means muzayyaf. Means false. Feels bad. Feels ugly. Again, sickly sham. These people are are false. Are horrible. Are bad. Are ugly. The bronze Dakota is the only real man. Uh -huh. The bronzed, the bronzed Dakota. Yeah. So notice the contrast here. She said this, these white men, these pale faces are false, are wicked, are horrible, are ugly, are sham. Whereas our men are the real men. Oh. I looked up in my mother's face while she spoke, and seeing her bite her lips, I knew she was unhappy. She aroused revenge in my small soul. Stamping my foot on the earth, I cried aloud, I hate the pale face that makes my mother cry. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> أي حد يخلي أمي تبكي أكرهه والله ما أحب والله حلالك isn't it yeah really it's um, it's <laughs> it's interesting really here the idea it's really amazing yeah setting the pail of water on the ground my mother stopped stretching her feet hand uh, sorry her left hand out on the level with my eyes she placed her own arms around me she pointed to the hill where my uncle and my only sister lay buried there is what the pale face has done there is what the pale face has done since then your father too has been buried in a hill nearer the rising sun we were once very happy, but the pale face has stolen our lands and driven us higher or hither, having defrauded us of our land. The pale face forced us away. Well, it happened on the day we removed camp from our sister and uncle were both very sick. Many others were ailing, but there seemed to be no help. We traveled many days and nights, not in the grand, happy way that we moved camp when I was a little girl, but we were driven, my child, we were driven, driven like a herd of buffalo. Driven? Yeah. كقطيع البقر قطيع البقر بوفالو واو يا with every step your sister your sister with every step who was not as large as you are now shrieked with the painful jaw until she was hoarse with crying she grew more and more feverish her little hands and cheeks were burning hot. Her little lips were parched and dry, but she would not drink the water I gave her. Then I discovered that her throat was swollen and red. My poor child, how I cried with her because, because the great spirit had forgotten us. It's a shame really here, the way she said the great spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit, of course, their own beliefs, their religious beliefs. At last, when we reached this western country, on the first weary night, your sister died. And soon, your uncle died also, leaving a widow with an orphan daughter, your cousin, Warqazi Wing. Oh, what a shame. Poor Warqa is an orphan now. Both your sister and uncle might have been happy with us today. 
had it not been, had it not been for the heartless spell face. Lola, Lola, had it not been. Mm, heartless pale face. My mother was silent the rest of the way to our wigwam. You know, wigwam is like a hut, you know, small hut in their homes, like a cabin or a, or a hut, really. They were made of, you know, um, trees and grass and so on. Though I saw no tears in her eyes, I knew that was because I was with her. She seldom, she seldom wept before me. I mean, look at this. It's amazing, isn't it? It's lovely. Very, very touching. And you can see, of course, the similar sort of really amazing narrative is so good. Uh, now, the next story, you know, here, really, it's a lovely, it's a lovely example. Please read it on your own. I'm not going to read it. And um, um, here, the next one, uh, again, I don't know if I'm going to read this one. Again, I will leave it for you to, uh, to read. Um, uh, maybe, let me see what, um, you know, we have so many. Please, I say... Please uh, read all of them. Uh, um, really, they are um, uh, very interesting uh, stories, all of them, especially here, like, for example, this number five here, the dead man's plum bush, and the next one here, the ground squ squirrel. It's again, really, uh, we go back to my cousin here, Warqaziwin. The same thing here she talks about. Really, I leave it all for you. The, the next time I'm going to pick some of those stories and I will, um, I will, read, I will read some of them for you uh, together. Uh, for example, here, this one, The Big Red Apples. Again, really, this is lovely uh, story. And uh, here... Again, the second section, the school days of the Indian, of an Indian girl. Here, really, maybe I will read some of this for you uh, next time. Notice um, uh, that the land, the land of red apples. Read that. I will read it with you maybe to later. This one, the cutting of my long hair. Again, is a lovely one. I will read that with you. And um, yeah, the last two ones I'll read with you quickly next time. But you see, um, this is the second one, which is the school days, you know, because this is a collection of short stories. They are all about the same narrator, which is here, of course, uh, or, you know, who is here? This young lady is this young girl from the beginning uh, when she was a child uh, till the end. Um, as I said, uh, if you like, um, let me check which one should. Uh... Yeah, let me see. Yeah, maybe I will, uh, I will, uh, if you look at this one here, the dead man's, the dead man's, you know, plum bush. Here again, I think it's a, it's a nice, as I said, uh, I, I really did not highlight everything because I wanted, I want you to check that on your own and to see, I'm saying here the romantic nature. I want you to study these to look at the question of romanticism, the question of the, really, the beauty of naturalism throughout these stories. Look here, the dead man's blum bush. Here, of course, talking about, again, th the same thing about, about the way they bush life. One autumn afternoon, many people came streaming toward the dwelling of our near neighbor. 
we with painted faces with painted faces and wearing broad white bosoms of elk's teeth they buried down the narrow footpath of haraka one 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 bees or one bds or i don't know how it's maybe this one bd one this wigwam <laughs> you know it's of course remember this is they buried down the narrow footpath to to um oh sorry um um I'm saying they buried, did I say buried or they hurried? They hurried down the narrow footpath to Haraka Umbidi's wigwam, you know, meaning going to somebody's and their name again, uh, Haraka. Yeah, it's the, the names, I like these names. Young mothers held their children by the hand and half pulled them along in their haste. They overtook and passed by the bent old grandmothers who were drudging, trudging along with crooked canes toward the center of the excitement, of excitement. Most of the young braves galloped hither on their ponies. Toothless warriors, <laughs> toothless warriors, like the old women, came more slowly, though mounted on lively ponies. They sat proudly erect on their horses. They were they wore their eagle plumes. They wore their eagle plumes and waved their various trophies of former wars. You know, look at this decoration and, you know, these warriors, the way they look like. And, you know, it's so amazing here, the description really of all these people, old people, young children, etc., young men, kids, old men, old women, everybody coming, gathering, you know, dressed in all this, you know, uh, lovely, maybe ceremony, we shall see. In front of the wigwam, a great fire was built and several large black kettles of venison, of venison were, were suspended over it. The crowd were seated about it on the grass in a great circle. Behind them, some of the braves stood leaning against the necks of their ponies, their tall figures dra draped in loose ropes, which were well drawn over their eyes. You see, as, as I'm saying, you know, when you read and read and read, you can look, you can notice Again, really the, the lovely the lovely narrative and the lovely really atmosphere here, the romantic description here of, of, of everything, the drink, the way they gather, the fire, the celebrations, the the naturalness, the spontaneity, the way they sit in grass, the way they dance, the way they uh, do things in a lovely romantic way. Young girls with their face with their faces glowing like bright red autumn leaves, their glossy braids falling over each other, sat coquettishly beside the chaperons. <laughs> Look at the, again, the word coquettishly and chaperons. It was a custom for young Indian women to invite some older relative to escort them to the public feasts. Though it was not an iron law, it was generally observed. Yeah, I mean, you know, they are going into like a celebration and things like that. It's it's really a lovely thing. I please uh, read all that uh, on your own because I really I can't read everything here for you. Um, again, here the way the way the description is so lovely. Uh, please read that for next time. Of course, next time is next week because. As you can see, next time is our test. Okay, that's it, uh, boys and girls. I think I will stop recording, and that's it for today. If you have any question, please.